good morning. Good morning. God's blessings to you here on this uh, annual observance of All Saints Day. Uh, special thanks to the Wallers family for the uh, uh, flowers uh, left over from, from Bill's funeral on Wednesday. And uh, just that reminder uh, of the, the beauty uh, that their souls now behold uh, in heaven's home. God's blessings as we worship our Lord, our Savior, our King of Kings. We open with our opening hymn number 507, Holy, Holy, Holy. service setting one today page 151 in the front of the hymnal in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Amen. if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins god who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This time the congregation may be seated. Uh, we will sing an entrance hymn, number 676. Behold a host arrayed in white.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that together with them we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. first reading for this All Saints Day is from the Revelation to St. John, the seventh chapter, uh, largely the basis for the hymn that we just sang. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from 1 John, the third chapter. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand now for the Alleluia and verse in Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. 
Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated as we sing for all the saints.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, dear fellow saints in the Lord. The text before us today is the epistle reading from 1 John, the third chapter. We hear again these words. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. Thus far, God's word. Your identity before God is the focus of today's celebration of All Saints Day. Going back to about the third century, Christians have gathered on a day like today to remember, to give thanks to God for those who've won the victory over death by faith in Jesus Christ who now from their labors rest. But as we remember those saints whose souls rest in heaven waiting for the resurrection of their bodies, we should also remember that the questions of life and death, of salvation and eternity, the nature of God are crucial for us today for developing our identity in Christ. Our epistle text instructs us in these things to prepare us to see God as he is so that you can know who you are in Christ. The text reveals God as a God of love, a God of hope, a God who makes us pure. God's love for us is beyond our understanding. It's beyond our imagination. St. John writes, see what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. If we think about taking that look, that hard look at ourselves in the mirror, this defies logic. Why would the all-powerful, all-knowing creator of the universe, who's perfect and holy, and all things call me his child. After all, I'm not any of those things that God is. In fact, I deserve to be punished for all the wrongs that I've done. That's the way the, the law works, right? An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Why wouldn't God work the same way? Commit a crime, expect punishment. But if this was the only way God worked, and God does indeed work this way, at least in regards to our civil life together. But if God only worked according to the law, then we'd be in constant fear. We'd always be looking over our shoulder to see, was God watching? And the fact is, we'd never be able to get ourselves out of the quicksand of sin that we were born into. For the more we struggle to overcome sin, the deeper we sink. But the fact is, God has changed us. Even in our sin, God loves us. St. Paul writes in Romans, God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners... Christ died for us. Christ died for you. Jesus is the way for repentant sinners to find God to be as he is, a loving, merciful God who dares to call us his children, who puts his name on us in baptism, uniting us with the death and resurrection of Jesus, his beloved Son, our Lord. Named by God, your identity is first and foremost in Jesus. And we need not doubt it or deny it because his word says it to us today. Beloved, we are God's children now. Inside these holy walls, this is a little bit easier to understand, to believe. 
outside the walls, out in the world, the world doesn't get this. The world says, really? You would dare believe in some mythical god? Now, you got to make a name for yourself. Forge your own identity. Make a name for yourself in this world. Be whatever you want. Identify however you want. And in this sexually charged world that we live in, there's all the voices that say, be straight, be gay, be trans, be gender fluid. Be an influencer. Be a champion for the oppressed. And if any oppressors rise up against you, be violent and foul mouth to them in order to crush them, to bring them in line. That's the way the world says to a better identity. And as Christians, I hope you're saying, yikes. That is so not the way. No wonder that it's getting to be harder and harder to be a Christian these days. But some days, actually probably most days, the world looks at us and they, they maybe have a point. The world says, you're a Christian, you're a child of God, and yet you still curse, lie, steal, cheat, drink or abuse drugs, watch porn-filled movies and television, maybe even live a, very, a life that's very, very contrary to the will and the word of God. Certainly, if God were the God you say who he is, who is so, so powerful and all-knowing, your life shouldn't be, we shouldn't be seeing what we're seeing. It should be different. Well, St. John explains this. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. The reasons why Christians and Christianity in general is belittled and badgered throughout the world is because the world doesn't understand God as he is. Unbelievers look at Christians, call us hypocrites, sometimes rightly so. The law always stands to correct us, to instruct us, to train us in the ways that we should be going. And yet the devil would use the, the fingers of the world pointing at us to say, how dare you call yourself a child of God? To which you and I as Christians can respond, well, if you're only looking at me, you're looking at the wrong person. You may see me succeed in my faith once in a while, but you will also see me fail in my faith frequently. And for those failures, beg for forgiveness from the person you've offended as well as from Almighty God. But to understand Christianity, you'd better look to someone else. Look to Jesus. Look to the cross where Jesus pays the full debt of sin with his life. Where he dares to Lay down his life in order to save yours. That's the God of love that Christians serve and look to. There is a God whose love is deeper and wider than anything else in the universe. And from that love comes a sure and confident hope in what is to come. The hope that God gives us is different because, well, it comes from God. Not from our thinking, not from our emotions, not from our intelligence. That hope is ours because, because God calls us to be his children and indeed makes us his children through the work of the Holy Spirit as the Spirit points us to Jesus, washes us with Jesus in baptism, assures us of Jesus in holy absolution and in the Lord's Supper. Also that 
when the world calls us hypocrites, we would dare to gather inside these holy walls to be fed, to be nourished, to be forgiven as beloved children of the Heavenly Father. This is the hope that comes from God that gives us confidence and trust to live as God's children now and to look forward to God's coming again when we will see God as he is. When we will see God full of hope and love for all sinners. And when that final day of judgment comes with our bodies, with our resurrected bodies and with our own eyes, we will be able to see God in all his glory and splendor. And when he appears, we shall be like him, like Jesus, with a glorified body, a body without age, without disability or tears or aches and pains or diseases or discomforts, made whole again. Again, this is beyond our understanding. And so, therefore, it's an article of faith something we must hold on to no matter what the world or our own sinful flesh or the temptations of the evil one throw at us. Trust that if God says it, he will do it. God is not a liar. God does not go back on his promises. And so therefore we can wait with eager anticipation for that great and final day. As God has revealed himself a God of love and hope that leads to purity, as St. John says, and everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is, the, again, the language of faith, for it is faith that grasps the gift of God in Christ. Faith grabs on to the purity, to the, to the purity of Jesus like the woman who dared to sneak through the crowd in order to just touch Jesus' garment, to touch his robe of righteousness, trusting and believing that if I just touched it, I will be healed. And she was. And so even as Jesus reaches out to touch us, know that by faith, you also are healed, forgiven of all your sins. Faith that can now say, I am baptized. I am clothed with the robes of Christ's righteousness, robes made white by the blood of the Lamb, as we heard in Revelation today. Therefore, soothe your conscience to know that I am pure because Christ is pure. There is your true identity in Christ. By faith, we are freed from sin, not just the effects of sin, the, a guilty conscience, shame, punishment, but we're also freed from sin's power. Sin is an enemy that we, by our own power, cannot overcome. It's evident if you've ever been to a funeral, whether a body in the casket or ashes in an urn. Death is the obvious result of the power of sin. Just have to pause for a moment. We've said farewell and we're going to say further farewells to dear saints of our congregation. Saints that I've ministered to <clears throat> saints that now rejoice, their souls rejoice in the comforts of Almighty God, who stood in the face of death and walked through the valley of the shadow of death without fear, because they knew God was with them. They know that thanks be to God, he gives us the victory 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. And from our Lord's victory comes the power to live a transformed life so that our words, our actions become, well, more saintly. More like that of those who have followed Jesus, more like Jesus. So on this All Saints Sunday, remember Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith, who endured the cross for your sins and raised again to eternal life. Baptized into that death and resurrection, you can also daily die to sin and rise to newness of life by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in you. For your identity is not in the things of the world or its false religions or its fashionable trends that are in today and out tomorrow. Out tomorrow. Your identity is grounded in a changeless Christ, the rock of our salvation. God has made himself known to you he is love. He is your hope. He has purified you as he himself is pure because he has washed you in the blood of the lamb, made your robes white as snow. Continue to abide in the promises of God, dear saints of the Lord. In his name, amen. Now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we will have the commemoration of the faithfully departed. A tolling of the bell will sound after each name is read. We have eight souls that we remember this year. Again, as alluded to, this the uh, November 1st is the... All Saints Day in the life of the church, and so we remember all those that have uh, passed away uh, since the last All Saints Day. Um, we have already started on next year's list. Uh, for those of you that may not have heard, Ellen Bratberg uh, passed away uh, on Friday, and uh, her funeral will be uh, on Thursday this coming week. So she is intentionally not on this list because she passed away on November 3rd, after All Saints Day. So let us remember with thanksgiving those saints that have gone before us. And we'll read the name, the bell will toll, and we'll read responsive, the passage responsibly. Oren Gilbertson, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Logan Grummans, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. Linda Vacht. For none of us lives to himself alone and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we belong to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Wayne Stoltz. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Verna Herrick. I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life. And will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Dolores Smith. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. William Wollers. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. Stanley Barch. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, 
but have eternal life. Let us pray. Almighty God, in whose glorious presence live all who depart in the Lord, and before whom all the souls of the faithful who are delivered of the burden of the flesh are in joy and happiness, we give you hearty thanks for your loving kindness to all your servants who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. And we humbly implore your mercy that we, together with all who have departed in the saving faith, may have our perfect consummation and bliss, both in body and soul, in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us join in the confession of our Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O Lord, faithful God, we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, and all things into your keeping. Deliver us in your righteousness from all that would harm the body or assault the soul. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, send your spirit to the ministers of the church who bring the good news of Christ's death and resurrection, that they may work through the preaching of this gospel to gather the lost, kindle faith in those who do not yet believe, and sustain all to the day of Christ's coming. Bless the congregations of our circuit, especially Concordia Red Wing, as they begin a vacancy and the call process. And also bless Emmanuel Potsdam and St. John's Hammond, as they have, as they have extended a call uh, to Pastor Fran Green, to come and serve them as their pastor. Let your spirit rest upon him that he may discern where to serve in your kingdom. Finally, we rejoice with the saints at Bethany Lutheran, College, Bethany Lutheran Church of Lake City as they celebrate their 75th uh, congregational anniversary today. May your word and grace-filled blessings continue to be poured out upon them. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed are you, O God, and blessed are the persecuted who suffer for your sake and whose witnesses and whose witness calls all to faithfulness. Bring peace to the nations, make our leaders wise, just, and honorable, and deliver us from terror, violence, and oppression. Bring peace to the Middle East and spare the lives of innocent civilians. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, comfort us by your abiding presence and satisfy all who call on you in their time of need. Especially do we lift up before you today Bob Lamprecht, Rick Argudo, Bill Gady, Roger Durgan, and any who are afflicted with cancer, heart troubles, depression or anxiety, dementia or Alzheimer's, and all other illnesses and diseases. Grant them patience in the midst of suffering, and according to your will, release them from their afflictions. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant that we may be brought to everlasting life with the faithful who have gone before us and now rest from their labors. Abide with the families of Stanley Barch and Ellen Bratberg, 
as they mourn and comfort them with the promises of God guaranteed by the death and resurrection of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you are the author and giver of life. We pray for your blessings upon those celebrating birthdays this week and also those who celebrate wedding anniversaries here in the month of November. By your grace, give them faith to trust in you for all their needs of body and soul, and let all marriages reflect the love of Christ for his bride, the church. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty Father, we give you thanks that you have washed us in the blood of the Lamb, written our names in the book of life, and made us a royal priesthood and heirs of an eternal inheritance. Though we are unworthy of your saving grace, we pray you to hear us in the name of Jesus Christ, in whom, with whom, and through whom all honor and glory is yours, O Heavenly Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue uh, to receive the, the gifts and promises of our Lord uh, through the service of the sacrament. Uh, we continue on page 160. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. In the communion of all your saints gathered into the one body of your Son, you have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses that we, encouraged by their faith and strengthened by their fellowship, may run with perseverance the race that is set before us and together with them receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Continue with the left column on page 162. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament and my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and you're coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and blood of your Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul and keep you strong in the one true saving faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace and with great joy. Amen. We stand to sing thank the Lord. pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given to us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated for a few announcements. Uh, on behalf of the ILCW, today is the last day to order uh, honey. Uh, for, to support the uh, Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch. And um, the orders are in the resource room following the service today. Uh, there was a change. Uh, we were supposed to have a, a, a baptism uh, after late service today due to some family circumstances. We're postponing that uh, one week. So the welcome to the family announcement, uh, you will see that again next week and when we actually get to welcome them into the family. Uh, I would invite uh, Matthew Files to come forward uh, for uh, youth announcements. Uh, in the, as he comes up, uh, the Stanley Barch funeral will be here on Tuesday at 11 a.m. Ellen Bratberg's funeral will be Thursday at 2 p.m., 2 o'clock in the afternoon, both with visitation one hour prior. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, it's the beginning of the month, so I wanted to save Pastor the trouble of reading all the list of things that the youth has going on uh, the next couple of months. Um, so we're kind of already getting into that holiday season, which I know might be scary and overwhelming for some of you, but we are there. Um, but first of all, tonight we have um, game night and pizza night uh, at the CLC, so we're going to be doing that at 5 tonight. So the calendar reads um, 6 or 6.30, but we're going to be doing it 5 to 6.30 tonight. So if you have uh, youth that are willing to come tonight, we'll be doing gym games and pizza and things like that. Uh, fourth grade through 12th grade for all those kids. Um, we have our deadline coming up for our mission trip to the Esperanza Viva um, orphanage in Mexico that we're going to in March. Um, the deadline for that is November 19th. Um, that is open to youth and other congregation members if you're interested. So if you have any questions, feel free to talk to me, but that's the 19th is when we need the deadline for that. Um, finally, we will be getting into um, Thanksgiving. The youth is excited to um, host the Thanksgiving uh, supper um, at a before service, a Thanksgiving service on Wednesday. So we will be doing setup on Tuesday night. Um, and then we will be doing the meal on Wednesday night. So you're all invited to that. Youth will need your help um, setting up for that uh, and serving that. And then uh, finally, we kind of miss um, the beginning. Um, the first week is Old Fashioned Christmas for December. Um, so the youth will again be putting on the craft sale next door. Um, that's a great, our biggest fundraiser of the year, um, bringing all those vendors in. Um, raising money for the youth as well as our bake sale. It's also a big fundraiser for the ILCW ladies um, as they serve lunch. Um, so we just want to thank everybody for helping out with that and the process as we go forward getting all of that set up. Um, 
If you have any questions about any of the youth stuff, feel free to find me. Um, we got a lot going on, so I know it can be a lot on the mind. But we got a lot going on, and we're happy uh, that the Lord has provided that for us. Thank you.